so guys as you can see we have led blinking here using the stm32 microcontroller we have set it up the stm32 microcontroller with the st link you can see over there we have the st link connected and that is powering up the stm32 also we are blinking the led now let me show you the code how it works so there we have the code see that in the gui part we just selected the pc13 pin as an output pin because we know the led is connected over there then in the main code we just wrote the code there this command sets up in this command resets up in and we got the syntax from the chat gpt so as simple as that this coding gave us this result over here that is blinking of an led hello guys welcome to learning microcontrollers in this video i will show you how we can blink an led using a stm32 f401 ceu6 microcontroller based black pill board we will be using ai help in this i will show you the benefit of using an stm32 over arduino over uh, you may say the microchips micro c pic 16 f 7 a uh, and other microcontrollers the stm32 have very good support on the ai tools like chat gpt or gemini whatever you prefer so i will show you how you will use those to write a code so first of all let's connect the hardware this over here is the black pill board i have and this is important that what microcontroller you have over it if you give it some light you will see that there will be a model written there the one i have is stm32 f401 ceu6 board so this is the board now to uh, connected with a computer in case of our pic 16 f8 uh, pic 16 f8 double seven a we used a picket three and for the arduino we just plug it in a cable for this you need a st link this one st link v2 on various other boards like the discovery like the nuclear board you already have this on board you have a bigger board and you have it installed on it for the blue pill and the black pill board you need to con connect this external it is not expensive very cheap even this microcontroller is very cheap now let me show you how to do the connections of the STM32 with the ST-Link V2 programmer. Now ST-Link V2 may come in two pin configuration. I have this one. You may have the other one with different pin configuration. But remember the pins I will mention here will go to the same pins over here. This is the port where you collect, connect your ST-Link. So first of all, let's uh, label the pins on the ST-Link which we are going to need. So in my case, it is pin number 8, the 3.3 volt. Then 6 is the ground, 4 is the SWDIO, and the pin number 2 is the SWCLK, that is a clock pin. Only these four pins are required to do the programming of the STM32 microcontroller using ST-Link V2. Now, uh, is some other ST-Link V2 you may buy from the market may have these pins shuffled, like 2 may be something else, 3 may be something else, but the name will be the same. So you have just need these four pins you have to figure that out now let's do the connections connect the 3.3 volt pin with the 3.3 volt pin of your stm32 like this for the ground connected to the ground for the swdio connected to the dio for the sw clock pin collect connected to the clock pin like this in this way our st link is now connected now for the led we will be using this onboard led over here this one's and it is connected to the pin number C13. It's an onboard LED. That is a simple hardware we are going to use over here. Now let's get to our STM32. Before that, let me introduce you to the hardware as well. So guys, this over here is our hardware. As you can see, this is the STM32 board that I have over here. D due to the shortage of light, you might not be able to read the controller, but it is STM32 F401 CEU6 board and there we have the ST link you can see that it is the same one as shown in the presentation and wiring is also the same as shown in the presentation so this is our simple hardware now we can move on to the STM32 for programming okay now let's open the STM32 cube ID I write there STM and here you can see the cube ID in the search bar let it open okay here it asks for the name just write any name you prefer I write here I write this is the workspace, not the name of the software. So in the workspace, unlike others, you make a workspace first. Then inside the workspace, there can be various codes. So I write here, STM32 tutorial series, blink and LED. That will be the name basically. So no need here. We will write this as a name. So for the workspace, workspace you can call the folder and the files you can call like name series tutorial by 
learning microcontrollers so that's it i launch okay the software is being launched just wait for it to be launched okay here we go the software is launched now the next thing is you click on file new file new and here you have stm32 project wait for it to open now there is an option to select the mcu you are gonna program here here you have the board and you have the mpu or mcu this means the ic on the board and this means the name of the board if you have some latest board or some board which is already in the list that will be your luck so i write black pill i could not find anything black pill so i simply write f401 okay in this list i cannot find my board so what i do is that i go to the see this over here the chip on the chip you will see that the name is written so it is stm32 f401 ceu6 now you go back after reading the name you just go to the mpu mcu selector here you write that name f401 ceu6 here we go there is our microcontroller now this will do now this is the one we are having here so this is fine it will also give you some description to verify so that's it click on next now here you will write the name i write blink and led okay click on finish yes so we are running it first time it may download some packages so let's see will it will it download okay it is downloading the package so any microcontroller you select for the first time it will download its package so once the package is downloaded so the next time you do not need the package now here is a very big problem with the software most of the time these packages do not download you get an error so you have to then do this all this manually especially for the old boards like the one we have they are like old versions for the old versions, the newer software sometimes do not have a support so that's a big trouble with this so i pause until the download is completed or if an error appears i will still resume to show you how to resolve the error so we are nearly done so you can see that this library is needed to be installed one time because we are running this f401 microcontroller first time so it is downloading the library once it's downloaded then you can like forever do the programming until an update is released so update is not released every day it is released like once in a year or in a six month minimum so let it install so it has been downloaded and then it will be installed successfully and then we will be ready to program it so you can see this stm32 is a free software and gives a very beautiful gui for programming and declaring and selecting the pins so let it do it and another thing with the stm32 is that it is easily it codes can be generated using the ai tools so it is installing just wait okay and now that's why i told you you have to log in first if you were not logged in then you will not be able to do this click on finish Okay, it is unzipping and installing the file. Just wait. Unlike other microcontrollers, STM32 provides a very beautiful, this GUI type stuff. I really like it. And another thing is that it's a, a, a bit very heavy software. So you need a lot of space on your drive and it keeps on updating constantly. But the good thing is it's free. You don't need any money to use it so unlike the microchip and even arduino is free and arduino is uh, small but this have more hardware choices available now okay now it is downloading the 281 another dependency so one is a vision other is a dependency again i'm gonna pause the video until it's downloaded we are nearly done now these are just one time installation for every microcontroller like if you use some other microcontroller then again it will download the packages so it will not keep on downloading for anything so let's unzip it so it is downloading the firmware files and the package and the GUI etc. So let it do it. So I think it's done nearly. Just wait. Okay, we are done with the downloading the firmware. Okay, now you can see the files have appeared here the both the ram and the flash now here the beautiful thing is this firmware window now as i told you on the pin number pc13 we have an onboard led so i select set it as a gpio output pin 
So if it's a GPIO output pane, then I can just program that LED like this. Now, once you have done it, then go to your project. Here you have generate code. Click on it. It will automatically declare the pins whichever you select. Okay, click on yes. Okay, the code is being generated. Wait. Okay, the code has been generated successfully. Now, this is your main coding window. And here you will write your code in your user code one here. Now, I go to the Google. Now, we will take the help from the chat GPT here. So, on the chat GPT, I go to the chat GPT here. And in the chat GPT here, introduction to chat GPT, click on try chat GPT. You may use a Gemini, whatever you prefer. Okay, now tell him what you want to do. We will be using this. Now the prompt is important. I tell him that I have STM32 cube IDE and I have F401CEU6 microcontroller to program. Now I have selected pin number PC13 as an output pin and I have an LED on that. Now write me a code which will blink that LED. So let's see what it do. So STM32 have this edge over other microcontroller chat GPT generates perfect codes for this. Now it is generating the code. So there he have used this command toggle the pin LED. Now this toggle command, I don't prefer it. I just tell him to write me a co code. Com this command will work, but I tell him to write me a command where I can like turn on and off LED. Uh, instead of toggle command, use commands to turn on and off LED like one command to on other two off that will be more useful okay now it is generating now see this is the command right pin and under just copy this now see this uh, chat gpt has generated you the whole code also these things are auto generated once you use the G gui that auto generated these things so you don't have to worry about it like these have already been generated now let me show you how on the GUI, if you go there, you will see that those commands are already here. See, that is the benefit of using the GUI. You only have to write your code here in the while one. Okay, go back to the chat GPT. You may copy this whole code or just copy this part which have been generated here. Because why I use the chat GPT? Because instead of going like for the data sheet to look for the syntax, now you know the syntax is right here. So this is the syntax. So we only needed the syntax and we got it from chat GPT instead of going through the data sheets. So there you go. Now this command will turn the LED set. This will reset and that's all. So what first we do is that we build the code to verify if there is any error or not. Now in the project, you click on build project. Now it is building the project. Okay. Can I... Okay, no error, that's perfect. So the chat GPT gave us a perfect code. So we just needed the commands and that's all. This is a command to like set the pin high. See, you don't have to declare because GUI has already declared the pin. It means set pin. And this is the command to give delay. This is the command to like set the LED low. Set means set high and this means set low. And then we will be having, this is after one second I make it. Okay, that is good. The LED will be toggling with the delay of one second. So that's perfect. Now we connect the ST link. Now go to your hardware. There you have the ST link. Uh, just connect it with the computer. So we connect the ST link with the extension of the computer. So here you go. I have connected the ST link. Now what we do is that we go back to our cube IDE. In the cube IDE, you have this called run. This button, green button run. You click on it. It will ask for the programmer. Okay, that's good. Build an LED. Click on OK. Okay. Now the vision was assumed. Okay, the newer version, no issue. It is asking to update the driver for the ST link. Do it. Okay, refresh the driver list. Open in update mode. Okay, restart means just you put it off. I have disconnected the STM32. 
Oh, sorry, the ST link. I have connected it again. Here you go. Okay, now click on upgrade. That's all. All you need. Restart means just you disconnected from the computer from the USB port and reconnected. That's that's all you need. Now the ST link will be upgraded. Okay, the latest vision is here. Okay, now it's fine. Now click on run. Okay, now it's asking. Okay, give it the permission. Okay, it is burning now. Wait for the debugger. Wait. Okay, it's done. Now the program is uploaded. So just go to the hardware and see it. Now see the LED is blinking. So very simple guys. This is how you do it. So this is our first code and this was also we also got started with a new board. We set it up a new board and then we blinked an LED. So this is it guys. So thank you very much for your time. We will have more videos on this microcontroller on the series. So there will be a whole list of lectures. So guys stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video.